Hey, everybody, how you doing? Hey, listen, are you a father? I know I am. And in this category of conversation, what we're going to have today is really talking about having a father's heart. See, in a generation and a time where being a father is not mostly the popular conversation, today we want to actually dig into that. And I and I have a gentleman on that I believe is going to give us some insight and some help into this piece dealing with having a father's heart. If you're ready, let's dive into this conversation. Let's go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Focus on Greatness podcast. My name is Hiram, and on this platform, we highlight ways where men can be able to experience greatness in their everyday lives. Today, we are going to be able to have a conversation dealing with this concept and mindset of having a father's heart. And so we're going to deal with and dive into this. So please do me a favor. Make sure you share some love, do, throw some hearts, and welcome my friend and Antoine Hayes. Hey, sir, how you doing, man? Hey, how you doing? Doing good, man. Doing good. Welcome to the platform, sir. Uh, thank you for having me. It's an honor. Yes, sir, man. Do me a favor for uh, those that are on, those that are listening, those that are watching. Uh, do me a favor and introduce yourself to the podcast uh, Greatness Family. Yes, sir. My name is uh, Antoine Hayes. Um, simply put, I'm just just the guy out here that's trying to do my best uh, in everyday life. You know, that's really what um, what I strive to do is just be my best every day, to be better every day in whatever capacity I serve in, as a father, as a son, as a friend, as a, an employee, whatever it is that I'm doing every day, I just strive to, to, to do the best and be the best. So, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, we're going to dive right into this conversation. As we prepare for this conversation, one of the things that, uh, again, that I share with you is that I've always had this um, this heart for when it comes to reference to you. I've been able to, to watch and observe you over the years, and I've been able to see the type of father and the type of man that you are. And so uh, today, what I want to do is really just kind of be able to dive into that context of you being a father. I think uh, even I was sharing with my wife, I think you are kind of one of those rare breeds, um, I would say. And uh, the, the, y'all as the audience, y'all be able to understand why I say that in a minute. But you, you're one of those rare breeds in the aspect of where um, you are not just a father, but you were a single father that was able to raise your son. And I, again, that to me by itself is, is one of those things where it's a rare thing that you hear a conversation on and those type of things. So um, do me a favor and let's kind of like start from the, from the beginning. Let's, let's, gotcha. go down this, let's go down this nice little road and let's start from the beginning. Okay, well, first of all, I give you a little uh, background on myself Mm -hmm. um, as a child growing up, my parents, they had me at a very young age. So, um, being the circumstance and the situation, um, my father wasn't in the home, you know, so, mm -hmm. uh, because they, they both were teenagers at the time when I was born. So, um, you know, growing up, I pretty much grew up, um, with a, um, in a single parent home with my mother, um, later on in life, um, she did get married to a, to a, a gentleman. He was a, he was a great, influence in my life at that time and I around the age of eight is when he came into my life. So they separated and got divorced probably when I was around twelve. So mm -hmm. at that time, um going in preteen going into my teenage years, um once again I found myself um in a, a place where I was at early in my life where I personally didn't have a a, a father figure or a male presence in the home. And so, you know, my mom raised me. And I have a great mother. She she did the the best that she could do. Um, she went above and beyond for me as as a mother and as a single parent. And, and being a single parent is tough. Mm -hmm. And so um, I found myself at the age of eighteen um, having a child of my own, preparing to have a child of, of my own. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And actually, my son, he was born on my 18th birthday. So we share the same birthday, which is just, you know, <laughs> funny in itself. That's a funny story. Right. right. So at 18 years old, on my 18th birthday, I now have this child that's that's being being born into the world in me, um, not per se knowing how to be a father because for my I didn't grow up in that environment or in a home where I was able to see this is what a father does or, you know, to pattern mm-hmm. myself. And, you know, I had a relationship with my dad, but he lived out of state and we didn't really communicate a, a whole lot at this point in time in my life. So um, here I am at 18 years old. I, I have this this child. Me and his mother were both teenagers at this time. Mm-hmm. And so um, I knew from the beginning with a little bit of wisdom that I had at 18 years old that I knew that I wanted to be a part of my son's life. I just like, I like, no matter what, this mm-hmm. is my son. And I just wanted to be there for him. So yeah. as time goes on, um, you know, I'm learning, Hey, I got this baby, you know, I'm going through the whole thing. I'm learning to change pampers and all, and all of this stuff. And I, and I really enjoyed it. It was never like, um, you know, we hear stories about young guys that that have children and they're like still trying to, um, you know, run the streets or they're really not hands on with the child. But it was something for me that just it was just amazing to me. Like I just wanted I wanted to change the pampers and I, I wanted him to be with me, you mm. know. Mm. And so um, so needless to say, as, as my son, you know, as Keon began to get older, And growing up, I was always there, even though at the time me and his mom, you know, we're both she's living in her mom's house. I'm living at my mom's house. Mm -hmm. And so, we're, you know, we're just two kids trying to figure out how to raise a raise a kid of our own. Yeah. And so, you know, as time is going on, I was always there, always, you know, around um, Keon as as much as I could possibly be. You know, of course, after time, you know, our me and his mother's relationship had dissolved and we wasn't in a relationship mm-hmm. with each other anymore, but yet I still made sure I maintained my relationship with him. Yeah. And so um, it came a point in time years later down the road um, where circumstances brought about where Keon came to live with me full time. And he, at that time he was 12 years old. So mm-hmm. pr- prior to him living with me full time, what would happen before then is that I would get him um, every weekend. I would go pick him up and just have him with me on the weekends mm-hmm. and I would turn him back to his mom. And then like some days out of the week, I would go see him, you know, um, mm-hmm. if, if he needed something or something. But, but prior to him coming and living with me um, full time, you know, I just had him on the weekends. Yeah. And so, so here I am at, uh, you know, he's coming to me. He's 12 years old at that same age. That's, that's a pivotal, pivotal time in a young man's life. I believe that preteen um, time frame. So he mm-hmm. comes to live with me. And um, so one of the first things I noticed is, okay, this is different than just having them on the weekends, you know, or sending them a few times throughout the week. Now he's here. Now it's my responsibility to make sure he's clothed, he's clean, he's fed. All of those responsibilities now lie with me. So um, just in that process, it caused me to be able to even um, grow more and take on the, the, the whole experience of fatherhood in itself. And like I said, I'm learning on the go this whole time. So needless right. to say, man, I've, it was some bumps in the road. I've, I've made mistakes along, along the line, but at 12 years old, he came to live with me full time. And then, um, you know, that's, that was a whole nother aspect of our relationship that allowed me as his father to really get him at that time and um, be able to make a, um, I guess you could say the uh, impact in his life at right. that time. So right. Let me now before we because I do want to dive into that because I want to be able to gain some things. Because one of the things that that um and again I was sharing this even with my wife um when, when I was talking about even having this conversation, one of the things that I know that is uh very powerful for me is not just the aspect that you raised your child, but that even to this day, which we'll dive into, y'all have a very great relationship. Um, even to this day. And so, uh, again, we'll dive more into that as well. But what I want to I want to ask a question. Um, j- let's just talk about this at the age, but before 12, before mm-hmm. you finally got him. 
you're working. Yeah. You know, you still got regular person, regular life things that you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, but what was the, how was this in reference to you pour, pouring into him some things, even in this time of where you had right. for a short point of time and then you had to, you know, like how was, what, what were some of the things that you were pouring into him at that point that, that, that you could kind of see, even though it wasn't the full effect until right. I'm getting to 12 up, but right. there were certain disciplines and behaviors that you were pouring into him at that time. What were some of those things that you were doing? One of one of the things that always sticks in my mind, and I, I think I've shared this story with you probably more than once, actually. But um, one of the things that always sticks in my mind is um, I never will forget this. I believe Keon was in like the second grade, and mm -hmm. this is and this is one of the things that I would stress to anyone, especially as a father, if you find yourself in a situation where you have a, a child, a son, a daughter, whatever it may be, but you're not in the actual relationship with with the mother you're not married you guys are not together you know you're two separate people trying to raise a child is involvement that's like yeah. the the biggest thing you find ways to make sure you stay involved with what's going on with that child mm -hmm. so i'll never forget one of these times um he had a parent teacher conference and i would when i found out about it i was always there mm -hmm. you know the parent teacher mm -hmm. conference so he was in the second grade and he had a teacher. I can't remember the gentleman's name, but during the parent teacher conference, he um, the teacher made this statement to me. He said, he said, I want you to know that your son has a great understanding of choices and consequences. Mm. And when he said that to me, I said, it must be something in particular that stands out to this man to see, OK, this this little guy is in the second grade, but he has this understanding of choices and consequences mm -hmm. for him to bring it up. And then when he brought it, the sincerity that he was sharing with me, like, Hey, like, I'm not seeing this with any of the other kids in my class, but I want you to know he, he has a great understanding of it. And so one of the things like I said, is being involved in from the beginning, one of the things I always um, really pushed, you know, or gravitated to was showing um, Keon, Hey, bad choices. You're going to get bad consequences. Good choices, you're going to get good consequences. And this is one of the things that I always try to instill in him because I understood um, even in my time, my time of growing up and the bad decisions that I made and how those decisions cost me. They mm. cost me things. So that was one of the things I wanted to make sure, hey, as as a father, this is the one thing things that I've learned in my own life that he has to understand this, mm -hmm. that you make bad choices, there's consequences to suffer from that. So from early on, I would use little life lessons mm -hmm. to show and illustrate this and always hit it home with him. So he can always have that reminder in his head. My my uh, choices always come with consequences, whether it's good or bad. Yeah. Yeah. And, see, yeah. and that's and that's really, I think, very important that one to be able to notice that even before he was fully with you, these were things that he was learning and being able to grasp um, that you were able to pour into. So just for the person that's listening or the person that's watching that you find yourself in this situation where, you know, again, you're not, you don't have your child full time. You know, you're, you're just, you you have your visitation pieces, um, which I went through that even with my mom and dad and, you know, you have, but you do have a moment in time. You have time where you're still, you have an influence. Right. You still have a finger where you can make your imprint on that child's life. Mm -hmm. And 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 I, I want this to be an encouragement to that father that's listening to be able to know that even though they might not be with you full time, they still remember the things that you show. That's the right. things that you're teaching. Um, and I and I just want to back this up by asking you this question. Was he able to see in the times that y'all would spend together, was he able to see you live the things by the consequences and the actions that you that you made yourself? Was he able to see, okay, this is what daddy taught me and telling me to do? Oh, but I can see it also in daddy's life. Right. Yeah. And that was one of the other things is you know, him being able to see even me still growing into my own manhood myself. Because mm. you, you got to remember that, you know, I'm 18. So as he's growing up, so by the time 
he's three or four years old when he's really the, uh, at an age of awareness when he's able to understand different things. Now he said, hey, my dad has uh, he's doing this. Mm-hmm. He's able to he was able to see some of the bad choices I made and some of the bad consequences, you know, that I had to suffer doing that because I'm still learning mm-hmm. as I'm raising him. I'm yeah. still learning, you know. Yeah. So yeah. Um, and one of the things that um, always would show him is like even after I suffered the consequences was to take responsibility for what I did, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, never. I never would try to uh, uh, put it off on someone else or blame blame it on someone else. I would come back and show him like, hey, I made a bad decision. And because I made that bad decision, now dad has to deal with the consequences of that. And I believe that not just seeing me say it to him, but seeing me live it out and, and, and taking ownership of the bad choices I made showed him like, OK, this thing is real. So I don't want to do some of the things that dad has told me and also some of the things that, that, that I showed him, to be honest with you. Yeah. 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 And I think that that's important because I think sometimes um you know, even even us as fathers, now you know me, us both as fathers. Sometimes we we we'll, we can get into a mode where we're telling, hey, you know, nah, this ain't what you're supposed to be doing, blah 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 blah. But then they don't see the other side of it. They don't see us being able to live out or do what we're instructing them to do. And I think that that's and that's as important as the instructions, right? You know, I think that that's as important as them as those instructions. Oh yeah, and then he and he saw as time went on, and I got wiser and ma- more mature and grew up. He mm-hmm. started seeing for himself. Um, once I started making better decisions in life, you know, he started seeing how. Okay, he started connecting the dots. Dad's making dad's making good decisions. Okay, life is getting better. Yeah. You know, not only for my dad, but it's getting better. It's getting sweeter for me too. So you know, <laughs> so he was able to really see it hands on. You know, yeah, so, yes, sir. No, that's good. Know, I think that's one of the things that really impact him to understand that. So yeah, yeah. Now let's let let's now building back up to now you have a twelve year old. Mm-hmm. Now you have him full time. Then yes, right. like you already said at the most pivotal point of his life. Right. How was that change going forward? Well, you know, the one of the biggest things that I saw off, you know, from the beginning was, um, okay, because when I'm getting them primarily just on the weekend, you know, it's just fun and games. We're going yeah. hanging out. We're, you know, having fun, going to the movies. And so for the most part, for that 48 hours, that Saturday and that Sunday, you know, you know, not saying that he wouldn't have to be disciplined or none of that stuff, but yeah. for the most part, it's just it was just fun and games. It's the weekend. We're having yeah. fun. I'm going with my right. dad. And so the balance that I had to find is and I and I remember like the first week he came came to live with me. I, I can't remember the exact scenario or situation, but something happened mm-hmm. and I had to discipline him. And mm-hmm. the first thing that came out of his mouth, I want to go back with my mom. Cause now it's mm-hmm. like, okay, this is not fun, dad. Right, you know, right. Who's this guy? You know, like yeah. No, I want fun that. So right. you know, of course I told him that wasn't an option. You're not going back with your mom. But one of the things for me, and this is one of the things I learned on learned early on in the process of him being there full time is um as a as a father in particular, because of the um because of how we are as men. And just the role that we naturally take on in the home, whether it's a family setting or you're a single parent, you know, as a man, you kind of take on, um, per se, like this manly role in the in the home. Mm-hmm. And so, mm-hmm. one of the first things I had to learn to um, to balance was between the difference between making your home a prison and making your home a playground. Wow. Like, you know, you got to find that balance. Like, okay, this isn't a prison. You're not a prisoner. Mm. Where you can't do anything. You, you know, you you it's chow time. Come in here and eat and go back in your cell, you know, and it's not a playground. You're not just in here swinging off, jumping over the furniture, swinging off the ceiling fan. And, you know, and yeah. so you have to find that balance in the home where, OK, this isn't a prison and it's not a playground. Mm. You know? mm. and, um, so for me to find that balance and, and honestly, some people say. Uh, my family members, both sides of my family used to get on me a lot 
mm-hmm. when they would see me and Keon. Like they mm-hmm. were like, man, you're tough on them. You're hard on them. And the thing was, it wasn't that I was trying to be tough or hard or mean on them. It's like I understood as him being a young man coming up in society, it's a certain toughness that I had to instill in him, whether right. it's fair or not. It's just the truth that he's going to face a tough society that where he was going to have to have toughness to be able to to persevere. Yeah. And whether it's fair or not, that's the truth. And so, you know, but also in that, too, I will always be affectionate with him. Mm-hmm. You know, like it wasn't just being hard with him all the time. It's, hey, son, and we talk about this before with you and your boys is, you know, we're not going to just box all the time. I'm not going to always show you how to fight all the time, mm-hmm. but I'm going to show you how hey, it's OK to to be affectionate. It's OK to be uh, to show love and be kind and those and those type of things. Mm-hmm. There is nothing mm-hmm. wrong with that as, as a young man. And so, um, you know, just finding that balance between the two and just, yeah. you know, hugging them, um, you know, loving on them, but also at the same time, building them up and making them making them tough. Because I knew that what this world had in store for him. And I think that's one of the most important roles as a as a parent or as a father that you have to do is is preparation. Yeah, that's like one yeah. of the biggest things we have to prepare our children to live in a world and live in a society that to, for, uh, you know, for all honesty, it, it's, it's tough. Yeah. And so one of the things you have to do is be truthful with your children. Also, you can't the, and you got to know what they're able to as they get older and mature. You're able to um, increase the transparency and the truthfulness that mm-hmm. you're able to give them, you know, because the older they get, the closer they're getting to, they're spending more time in society than, they're, than they are in your house when they become older. And that's one of the things you got to remember. A majority of their time is going to be spent at school. If they get older, they're going to be hanging out. They're not going to be in your home as much. Hey, I'm 16 years old now. I want to go hang out with my friends down the street. Hey, I'm 17 years old now and I have a driver's license. Hey, I'm going to be out. When's my curfew? So they're spending more time outside of your home than they are in your home, the order that they get. So that's why you got to start giving, start giving them more truth. You got to start giving them more honesty about um, things that that's going on in life and things that they're going to face when they go out there. So one of the, the things for me was always to maintain an influence in, um, in Keon's life. Cause mm-hmm. I knew if I could keep his influence um, that that's the way I could continue to impact his life. Cause What's going to happen is he's going to have so many other influences that's going to start coming. The older he's going to get, he's going to have friends that's influencing him. They got music that's going to influence him. They got social media that's going to influence him. See, all of these things weren't weren't prevalent when we were growing up. Right. But now, right. as parents, these are the things that you, in a sense, you have to compete against. So one of the ways that I always wanted to keep um, my influence was to stay involved and stay interested in what he was interested in. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. and um, a lot of times as parents, as these kids begin to grow older, become teenagers, we kind of leave them to their to their selves. They stay in yeah. their room, or they're gone or they they're doing whatever they're doing. And you're like, you know, you're you don't want to deal with them anyway because they got a bad attitude and, <laughs> and all of that stuff. But you can't let that stuff, you know, bother you. You got to stay interested. You got to stay involved and know what they're what they're into. And then yeah. find some commonality. One of the biggest things for for us, honestly, was the video game, like playing the PlayStation and Xbox. Yeah. That was the things that we, that we would do together, even up until the point in time to where he actually left and joined the Air Force. And, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. you know, just find, just find that way to stay involved with their life. Because, like I said, they're going to spend more time outside of your home than, than they do inside your home. Pretty much the time they spend in your home, they're going to be sleeping yeah. as a teenager. <laughs> when you see right. them, they're going to be in there sleeping. And, you know, so that's one of the things I can say. Find that balance between making your home a prison and a playground. Staying interested, staying involved in, in your child's life and, and, and making sure that you're keeping that influence in yeah. their life, even as they're they're growing older. Yeah. Now I wanna I wanna because we one to one, you've given this is some good stuff. I, and I hope the people that's listening, all jokes aside, I hope they're listening because reality is if we have seen so many fathers mm-hmm. that in a in a form of trying to protect their child from life, right, they have made their homes a prison. Right. 
And so the 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 effect though that happens that we have seen it is the effect is when they leave, just like any person. I ain't it's trying to come up back, back in jail. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I ain't trying to come back to jail. <laughs> I, it's a prison break. Hey, right. I'm out of here and I'm gonna do anything that you told me not to do. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's and so I think if we do, like you're saying, find that balance of where, you know, yeah, you have some restrictions. Yeah, you have some guidelines. Yeah, you do some things, but there also has to be this balance of where you have fun too. Right. You enjoy the moments. And, you know, you, you have this balance of how you can balance each poor, where it's not you just a fun dad. You just a fun dad. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because then it's like, yeah. oh, no, we can do whatever we want to do. Right, right. You know, type right. thing. You know, yeah. but it's having that beautiful balance in between. So I believe that that's a that's a that's a very great wisdom. Yeah. Um, it, for it, what, one of the points, just going back real quick, and I mm -hmm. just thought about this because I wanted to share this with you as well as with the audience. Um, going back to like with the with the choices and consequences, because you're still teaching them this process even as they're getting older. You know, mm -hmm. and so one of the things that um, I always thought about this was affirmation. Always affirm your kids, you know, always affirm them and let them know who they are. You know, you, you got to tell your kids who they are, because if you don't tell your children who they are, their friends are going to tell them who they are. Society is mm -hmm. going to tell them who they are. Social media is going to tell them who they are. So you got to affirm your kids mm -hmm. and let them know, hey, this is who you are. Then the other thing is, you, like I said, you, accountability. So you have affirmation. You have accountability. Always hold your kids accountable, Yeah, whether it's good or bad, when they do something good acknowledge it and that accountability is just acknowledging you know mm. hey you did something bad i'm gonna hold you accountable for that hey you did right. something good hey i'm gonna award you for that so affirmation accountability acknowledgement and awards there's nothing wrong with that um awarding your children you have to award them when they when you when your child when your child is doing well your child is not not that in the sense they're perfect but they're doing the things that you're asking of them the way you get them to continue to do that is by awarding them. Hey, if, if it's something as simple as, hey, I'm, I'm going to take you out to eat. Hey, right. I'm going to give you a few dollars. Like for Keon, I knew one of the things, he, he's just like me, he has a passion for shoes. So his thing was, hey, I'll go get you some shoes, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever that thing is that they like. You In this way, it, 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 put, um, it really keeps the child with a desire to continue to to do the right things, to continue yeah. to make the right choices. But a lot of times what we find is parents, you're giving your child this, but yet in a sense, they haven't earned the things that you're giving them. They're not, right. they're not listening to you. They're not listening to the teachers, but yet you keep showering them with things and they're, they really don't have, why should I do the right thing? You're going to give me what I want anyway. Right. So I'm just continue to do what I've been doing. And so, <laughs> I mean, that's one of the things, you know, that I just found for myself to, to work like, and I will punish them. Yeah. Like I'll use the thing. And I told you, no one always about whooping. I think I told you this one time about you have to find ways to discipline your child. Cause at a certain point, whoopings that, that doesn't change a child's mind. Cause right. that's only going to last the pain will last for however long, 30 <laughs> minutes or whatever. Right. <laughs> but you, when it comes to discipline in your kid, you got to find that thing. That's their thing. For Keon, it was the video game. Mm -hmm. I'll take the video game away. For him, it was, hey, you can't wear your new, those new shoes you got. You got to wear the old busted shoes to school. <laughs> you know, like, just you got to find the things that's going to impact them when you do have to hold them accountable yeah. and discipline them. Yeah. You know, so that that's the thing as a parent. And, that, and it just goes back to what I'm saying. You got to stay involved. You got to stay interested in what's going on with your child so you can know these little things. These little things that will make a difference. Yeah, yeah. Now let me um let me ask you this because now you have a child. He's a grown man, right? Can't you know? He's a grown man. He's in the Air Force. Um, now married. You know. Uh, you know, knocking on the door, of being 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 a dad himself, right? You know, um, you know, all of these different things. So I want to is two one question I'm gonna ask about Keon, and then okay. I'll switch it a little bit, uh, just to, just to add a little extra piece to this conversation. But at this level, of now him about to walk into fatherhood himself. 
What would be your wisdom tip for him? My wisdom tip for Keon would to be, and I and I've shared this with him before, is always um, build on a solid foundation for your life, hmm. whatever capacity you're serving in, and to to seek the, the Lord's wisdom because you need it because you're not going to know what to do. Yeah. You're, you're, it's going to be times that that come up where you're going to need wisdom, like. I didn't do everything right, you know, as a dad or make the right decisions, mm -hmm. but to be able to have the wisdom and the grace of God on his life. And that's what I always tell him. Hey, man, just just build your relationship with the Lord. That's yeah. the main thing. I always have a solid relationship uh, with the Lord and build us build your life on a very solid foundation. Um, yeah. So my, my wisdom tip to him is is just to be a hey, be the best you can be. That's all. That's the only mm. thing that's required of us. You be the best father you can be. You be the best husband that you can be to the best of your capabilities. Yeah. You give it your best shot every day. Yeah, I love that. I was um there's a, there's a TV show and this is not a promotion of this TV show personally, uh, but it's a show my wife loves to watch and you probably seen it or heard of it. This is us. And um, there's a segment on there that um, one of the sons that 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 really like idolized almost like his father. He idolized his dad. Um, he's now coming into a point where, for the first time now, he's about to have his first child. Mm. And he was he's an actor, this, this, and this. And he's at this point, he's 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 uh, doing his little thing, you know, as an actor, about to get ready to do this movie set. And his his fiance at the time, she's at home. They had a scheduled time frame of when the baby supposed to come, all of this. The girlfriend or the fiance goes into labor early. Now they're having twins. Mm. He's now trying to hurry up and get to the fiance so he can be there for, you know, his baby's being born. And so he's, I mean, the whole episode, it's one of the whole entire episode is, is a stressful episode. <laughs> right. Trying to see this man get to this woman so he can be there. But throughout, he kept making this statement. I'm trying, I got it. My dad was there for me. So I want to be there for him. I want to be there for my babies. I want them to see because my dad, if this, my dad was here, this is what he would do. Mm. And so even when the babies were born, they were, they, he had drove them home and they're showing comparisons of when his dad did it with them and, you know, all of these things. And then there was a moment where he was, he was at home with, his, with the babies and he had fell asleep and in his dream, his dad comes to him in his dream. And his dad said, all my life, I, in a nutshell, was trying, I, he said, he said, I was so fearful to be like my dad that I tried to do X, Y, and Z. He said, but your situation, son, is you're so fearful not to be like me. Wow. That you're trying everything you possibly can. He said, but the problem is we're both fearful. Yeah. He wow. said, well, stop trying to be me mm -hmm. and just be the best you. Oh, that's that's wonderful. That's it. And so when you made this statement, it took me back to that to that to that show. And I was like, that's what we see. We yeah. see in a in a father, we see a father where it's like. My heart is I want to be the best father I can be to my child. Right. So it's either I'm like, I don't want to be this dude. I ain't trying to be right. what he did it. Right. Or it's I had a great father. Mm -hmm. So my heart as a father is I want to be what I got to my from my dad. Right. And but again, like he said, it's the fear of both. It's yeah. at the end of the day, it's still fearful. But the best right. decision is just being you, just yep. be the best father that you can be able to be. Um, right. I know, I know I always make this statement, you know, when um, I used to for years, Twan, think of this, you know, in reference to with me, I was, I used to be personally on the other end. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be, I didn't, I didn't want right. to be like my father in the aspect of where I, my, my, I was separated from my wife mm -hmm. and in the boy's life, you know, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And so, um, so I always used to go through this piece of, of wanting to give my children the best they can have. Right. You know, I want to be, I want to, I want to give them everything and be, the, be everything I can to them. until one day I realized, one day I realized I'm already giving my children the best because the reality is my children didn't have me. Mm -hmm. The experience that I had, the ups and downs that I've had, everything that I have so, something that I can give to my boys that I didn't, I can't give to myself. So right. they're already winning. Just oh, me yeah. being here, me being just present your presence alone yeah. is doing it. Because if y'all didn't have any of the trinkets and toys and none of that stuff, was well, you were able to provide that stuff. But just the fact that dad is here, right? We can depend on dad. Yep. We can depend on dad being being there when we need him. Yep. And that right there means more to a child than than we can ever realize. And especially, mm -hmm. you know, like you said, for me and your we we both have a similar childhood that we were raised by single women. Mm -hmm. And just knowing the fact that you're able to have some type of involvement and have a constant presence. And that don't mean you have to physically be there to be to have a presence in your child life. And that's one of the things that I did learn. And I always share with other men that I meet that, like you said, they're they're not in a relationship with the mother. You right. don't have to physically be there to have a presence in your child's life. Then especially with all the technology that we have nowadays, it's a whole lot easier whole you know, <laughs> to be able to even have a physical presence per se yeah. in the child's life. You know, so the um the the thing that I would just want to encourage um, any father out there, um, especially the ones that have children that are not there in the same household with them, is to know that you don't have to physically be there to be able to maintain a presence as well as an influence in that child's life. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And so but I, I want to I, I do like I said I was I want to shift this because now. You're married, mm -hmm. and in that beautiful union that you have, you have a baby girl. She's yep. not a baby baby, but you know, right. a little bit. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, the dynamic of this um, is 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 some different in it. One, not just because you know now that you're married, it's a difference, right? But it's also different because now it's a girl. Yeah. Um, and it's a different time. Right. So are you able to have you are you still utilizing some of the same things that you used before now? Or have you seen some tweaks or adjustments that you need to make to kind of pour in that same foundation? <laughs> well, I'm still using, I still use the principles that, okay. I, that I've i learned with Keon. Mm -hmm. We still, we're still doing the balance between the prison and the playground, even though it's, it's much harder to do it with a little girl because, <laughs> you know, that's a whole, that's a whole nother topic. But uh, you just have a right. way of, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta, you gotta wear your, you gotta wear your fights. <laughs> yeah, man, that little little girl just has she has more persuasion. Let's say that than she out there, but still using that same principle though. You know, yeah. you have to have boundaries and restrictions in place, but yet you can't. It just can't be all just discipline and all restrictions. Um, gotcha. still using the choices and consequences because that's a pivotal, pivotal, uh, pivotal thing to learn. Um, for anyone. Yeah, you no know, bad yeah. choice, bad consequences. So we're still, still doing that. Um, uh, one of the things, honestly, if I could say an adjustment that I that I had to to make it was to be, um, to be more. I don't want to say more soft or tender, and it might be because she's a girl, but <laughs> just you know. Because like with Keon, man, and sometimes I would actually take on that drill sergeant role with him. Mm -hmm. But I think mm -hmm. it goes back to what you're saying. It's just out of fear. Like, I can't let him make the bad decisions that I made growing up. Gotcha. You know, so yeah. for some of that for me was to um, to I eased up off of that so much. And, and you know, with a girl, you really mm -hmm. can't do it. 
to that same capability, you know. But that's one of the adjustments that I but that, that I have made, man. It's just yeah. you know, just the, the firmness that, right. that I had to use with him sometimes. But yeah, yeah. Well, and one of the reasons why I asked that was because one, I want to con- I wanted to ask it one because you're talking about now two different type of generations of of people. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Two different type of generations of child children. Yeah. But then also you're looking at two different times for you as right. a parent. Oh, yeah. You know, you know, from from you being a younger parent mm-hmm. to now being more, you know, more mature parent. Um, you know, and, and so I, my mindset was okay, is what's the difference of the dynamic or is the foundation of it still the same? Um, you know, and you were just making adjustments because reality is just like anything, any time frame, certain people raise their children differently, right? In the in the in the eras that right. their children is raised in. Right. Um, and so my thought process was, well, is is it still the same? Like, okay, yeah, you know, yeah, you got some, yeah, you know, we talk about new technology and more convenient things and all of these different forums. But is the foundation still the foundation? It's still the foundation. I think those principles, the affirmation, the accountability, the acknowledgement, the awards, you all of that stuff remains the same because yeah. we still have to they still have to have the same lessons taught to them. You know, yeah. things have to uh, a greater a greater point needs to be made now because of so many different things in the society that we live in. You have to affirm your children even more now because yeah. we have more things telling them what they should be, who they should be, or what is acceptable. You know, even if those principles go against what you're teaching in your household. So the principles remain mm-hmm. the same, but you have to apply the principles even more now because you because children are having so much more thrown at them at a younger age, they have so many influences that that they're they're getting exposed to at a younger ages now, to the point to where we now have the term being used, influencers. Like mm-hmm. these people are paid to influence <laughs> you, to influence your children. So these principles that we're teaching now are more important than they were when when 10, 15 years ago when I was raising Keon. So yeah. our your, your sons. You know, um, Jawan and Zay. I mean, they're and Amaya. They're all the same age now. And you, we see this. Yeah. You know, to where yeah. we have to apply these principles to them, even much more the 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 uh, the more now, because now, of the way the uh, society is at this point. Now, let me ask this: Do you think that it might be diff- more difficult in this age to keep the influence? Because now you have so many different, so much more traffic. Yeah, I believe that it is. It will be tougher, you know, um, to to maintain that influence in your home. But at the same time, I do believe if you establish those principles and use those principles, that you know you will be able to get the same results that you were able to get before. Mm -hmm. Um, It's Mm -hmm. just that you have to make sure you're staying on the job of doing it more now, you know? Gotcha. So, you know, where with 10, 15 years ago, uh, you know, you, you might not have to do it every day. You know, mm-hmm. with Canada, it might have been two or three times out of the week I had to apply. Now, man, you got to be on your job every day as a parent nowadays because these children are getting exposed to more and more every day, even mm-hmm. just watching TV. They're yeah. just sitting there watching television. You know, and the things that they're being exposed to, and they're being targeted also. Yeah. They're targeted yeah. at children, you know, and so um, one of the things you got to do is just, you got to, you're not taking a day off as a parent. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's, off, yeah, and that's really um, one of the things that I wanted to make sure that I emphasize because. As a as a father, I believe one of the responsibilities for us is to help to set that foundation, you know, is to help cultivate those pieces. And, you know, the busyness of being a man as well 
also understanding that, okay, I understand you're busy. I understand you got to work. I understand you're trying to provide. I understand you you might be tired. You can't probably tell your wife, I say it in the house that you're tired, but I know you, I understand that you might be tired and you, you might got a lot going on in your mind that you can't express. I get all of that, but you still have to make sure that you are engaged. Yes. Because the reality of the era and the time that we're in is man, listen, you can lose your child earlier. Oh, yeah. Now yeah. Than, yep. than ever before. Right. I mean, you can lose the influence very yep. quickly if you don't stay up on that. And I and sure. and 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 I know you can probably even agree with this context. Something as simple as because our, our children is young, you know, my oldest at this point is nine, you know, Zay is, you know, seven, yeah. you know, you know, Red, she coming up, she's coming up in the rear, you know, yeah. and, but even in those pieces, something as simple as asking your child, how was your day? Yeah. And actually wanting to know, not just asking mm -hmm. that sure, but really engaging in them at their, at these young ages. And right. continuing that piece helps you stay involved, helps you keep yeah. that door of influence um, open. Yeah. Um, so you've been you've been in two different. You're still in this aspect of where you're in two different peers at one time, two different right. at one time. Yeah. But you've done something already that you know, as Bishop would say, um, our Bishop would say, you, know, you ain't really raised a child until you raise a teenager. Mm -hmm. You know, you've been through that level already and made it to the other side. Right. Um, and so having the reason why I want, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have this conversation was because I needed, I wanted men to be able to hear in the era and the time that we're in, one, how important you are, mm -hmm. how important you are and how much, how needed you are. But then also I wanted to, to be able to say, for men like you that took on the responsibility, because reality is you didn't have to take on Keon full time. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you you didn't have to be in part of be a part of his life the way you were, even mm -hmm. before you even before 12 years old. You didn't have to do that. Um, but for the men like yourself that that chose and took took, you know, took the responsibility of doing that. I want to openly say, and I've said this to you already before privately, but thank you. Oh, man. Hey. Hey, I appreciate that. And, you know, you always tell me, you know, um, you always uh, compliment me. And, and, you know, and I always tell you, man, it's just by the grace of God, man. Honestly, yeah. like I said, I, I, I learned a lot of things, you know, along the way. And um, I'm just grateful and thankful, man, that. I had the opportunity to to um, be a dad. I mean, to me, honestly, I don't know how you can. I have a hard time understanding, you know, how a man can have a child and not have want to have any involvement in that child's life. I, like I said from the beginning, as soon as I I wanted to, just something inside me wanted to be a part of their life. So it's hard for me to understand how men that have children and have no involvement, mm -hmm. you know. Not because they're not allowed to, is that they make the decision and the choice to not be involved at all in their child's life. Yeah. For me, I, that's something that I personally don't understand. You know, I don't judge or try to condemn or you know anyone mm -hmm. for the decisions that they make. But for me personally, I I can't understand that. Like from the very beginning, when I seen this seen this baby, this is like man, this is he came from from me. How could I right. not want, you know <laughs> to be involved with? With this, with this little guy's life, so yeah, yeah. Hey, I, I I enjoy being a dad, even and you never stop being a father. Like even with Keon, you know, with his, he has his own family now, his own career, but he still, you know, I still play a role in his life, and I'm grateful for that. Um, you know, to to be able to be that a father is never not needed. Like even yeah. with me later on down in life, I really was able to establish a, a relationship with my own father. Mm -hmm. I've shared this mm -hmm. with you before in our own private conversations that how much I value the relationship that I have with my dad. Because I'm able, I still need him at times in my life. Mm -hmm. Even at, you know, 40-something years old, it's still times where I still need my fathers. 
Yeah. I still need my father's uh, advice, my father's um, impact, my father's influence, my father's um, information, because he's he's traveled the road that I'm traveling now. Right. So, right. You know, and I and I'm grateful for that. It's it's never a time that a father is not needed. So, um, yeah. Just continue to be involved with your children and being interested in their lives, no matter how old that child is. Yeah, and I and I and I'm again. I get the opportunity to be able to to witness it on the daily <laughs> um, of the relationship and the influence. Um, that you do still have in his mm-hmm. life, and uh, and again, like I've shared with you, per, you know, privately, um, you know, I I love it. I love to see the relationship. I love to see all of those things because that helps me. You know, that helps yeah. me as a father to be like, okay, that's what I want. You know, right. so it's like, no, I want to grab you. I want to grab. Let me grab as much information as I possibly can, so right. I can make sure that I'm pouring and doing and setting the stage for my sons and my boys, right. uh, so we can continue to move forward. So, um, so let's do this. I want to ask this question. Um, um, I try to make sure that I ask everybody on on that comes on as a guest this question, and that is, what's greatness to you? Greatness to me, the 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 word great in itself. I mean, just looking at the if you look at the definition of the word great, it mm-hmm. means to be above normal or to be above average. And so, for me, it goes back to a point that I made earlier. It's not that you are the best, you know, because we think about the goat, the greatest of all time. And when we use this word great in aspect, like you have to be the greatest of all time. You have to be. Yeah better than everybody else but in actuality the word great just means to be above normal or to be above average so to me greatness means to just be the best you that's that's it in a nutshell every day you be the best you in whatever capacity you serve in it especially as a man whether that's as a husband as a father as a son as a friend Mm -hmm. as a employer as an employee whatever capacity you're serving in you be the best you and that's what greatness means to me well, hey man, I'm I'm grateful that you are <laughs> on, <laughs> and I'm thankful that, that, that you that you came on. Um, for those that are watching and those that are listening, um, my his information is at the bottom in the description, and you can be able to follow him and and, and watch and see how he does not only uh, fatherhood but how he does life. Now, for those that are watching and listening. Um, he didn't know I was going to do this part, but I'm doing it because because I, you know, because he's my friend. And I really I would do this to any person that comes onto the platform. <laughs> I also want to give a plug. Uh, he he has a, he has a personal business that he does, and it's called Clean Closet Kicks. Yes, and sir. So, um, he is I would consider one of the best in the business, and uh, you know I might be a little bit biased, but but I'm not because other people has also attested to the same. And um, so if you are looking for some shoes, some J's, some tennis shoes, make sure again that you hit that description in the bottom, hit that link, go follow him on his Instagram and his Facebook page. And I promise you, he'll take care of your feet, make your feet oh, yeah. look nice. Uh, so yo, I see you in the back. I see. You. Yeah, I see you stack in the back, man. So again, man, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for being a part of this conversation. As thank always, you. Uh, you know, we're gonna continue to chop it up, but I wanted to take the time to dive in and dig in with my friend so man, we can help some fathers and encourage some fathers out here as well. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate what you're doing with your platform. Thanks, man. Thank you. So f- Facebook family, um, all those that are watching from YouTube as well as listening on all platforms. Thank you all for being on today. Remember um, that you can be able to continue these conversations with me every first and third Monday at 630 p.m. Central Standard Time. Love you all. We'll see you next time. Talk to you all later. Bye bye.